It's been another head-turning week in Washington, from the Republican failure on health care to the president's surprising statement on transgender military members and a flurry of profanity from the new White House communications director. And then to cap it off, today's announcement from Mr. Trump that he's changing his chief of staff. Here to help make sense of it all, Shields and Brooks, that syndicated columnist Mark Shields and New York Times columnist David Brooks. So I thought we had a lot of things to talk about, David, uh, before about an hour ago when we learned that the president was changing his chief of staff. Is this, uh, uh, I guess it, we knew that this might happen. Reince Priebus has been in trouble with this president, we think, for a while. But uh, what do you think? Well, he was never given the chance to do the job. Every other chief of staff we've ever seen has sort of controls the schedule. They control the tempo in the White House. They're the alter ego of the president. They're given some clear sign of respect that they speak for the president. And Priebus never had that. Uh, and so he was wounded and stabbed before Scaramucci came along. He was stabbed by like a pinata. And so he was sort of a pathetic figure hanging out there. And so this is, doesn't come as a total surprise except for maybe the timing. As for General Kelly taking the job, uh, I sort of question his sanity there. Uh, he's been a loyalist, um, but I really, with all due respect to the Marine Corps, I don't see how someone who's uh, been trained in a pretty orderly chain of command is going to survive this mess. Uh, if he can control the schedule, it would be one thing. I just don't think that's going to happen, uh, given all the, the independent power figures all around him. What do you make of it? Priebus out and Kelly in. Judy, I am continually amazed that uh, it's, it's not simply a, a matter of human decency uh, or, or empathy uh, when you, a boss is firing anybody to make sure that that person leaves and has a soft landing, that they can leave with their self-respect, that they can leave with some place to go to with a, with a plausible explanation to their family and friends that they weren't humiliated, abused, and derided. This president treats staff uh, and others uh, like a, a used sickness bag on a bad airplane flight. Um, it's just absolutely no sense of respect or, or decency shown. So you humiliate somebody. Um, and uh, it, for those who are left, uh, there's just a sense of, could I be next? I mean, it certainly doesn't inspire loyalty. As far as uh, Kelly is concerned, General Kelly is a four-star general, but uh, I think David put his finger on it. He had a very distinguished and honorable military career, but he grew up in a military structure. He thrived in a military structure. I mean, you, you, as a chief of staff at the White House, um, th this is a freelancing operation. There's no chain of command. Yeah. Um, there are all sorts of people who go in and see the president any time who are not accountable to you or responsible. And, and, and least of all, do you have a president who will even abide by any sense of a, a chain of command or a structure? So, um, and I, I don't know that General Kelly has any particular political gifts uh, or no knowledge of the legislative process uh, uh, or dealings with the press. So, uh, I'm not. I, I know that the, the the president admires him and the job he's done at Homeland Security and and his career, but I, I don't see the fit. We should say that uh, Reince Priebus, just in the last few minutes, David, has put out a statement saying it's been one of the greatest honors of his life uh, to serve this president. I guess that's what one expects, uh, maybe. Gracious. I'm not <laughs> sure it passed the lie detector test. But, uh, but, you know, one of the things that's happening here is that the, uh, the president is moving away from the Republican Party. Priebus was a link to the Republican Party. The congressional Republicans were had some sort of relationship. Jeff Sessions was a key to the link between congressional Republicans and Donald Trump, and he's been under assault uh, in the most humiliating way imaginable. Mm -hmm. And so you're beginning to see an administration, uh, I don't know what party they're joining, maybe the Bannon party, but it's not the Republican party. And if you want to pass for legislation, you probably need your allies on Capitol Hill. If you want to survive investigative committees, you probably want some friends in your party. And this is an administration that seems to be moving in the other direction. In fact, you look at the White House, and uh, I mean, Vice President Mike Pence uh, Mark may be the only person prominent in the White House circle who ha has any kind of Washington. Uh, yeah, yes, connection. Judy, and, and presidents thrive when, uh, <coughs> ideally, <coughs> pardon me, when they're both loved and feared politically. And Donald Trump is neither. Nobody loves him uh, on Capitol Hill. I mean, he shows loyalty as a one-way street. Uh, he's not a, a, a somebody who has 
personal relationships of any standing, um, and uh, the loyalty or disloyalty that he shows to his people, including Jeff Sessions, the attorney general, who uh, was just humiliated, someone who was with him early and strong uh, at a time when no other senator stood up for him and remained there through all the access Hollywood and the how-to molest and harass and sexually bother women tapes and so forth. Uh, so there isn't, there isn't that, Judy. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't exist. Uh, and uh, David's absolutely right. I mean, when you get in trouble, you've got to have people who, A, like you, believe in you, and, and are willing to go to some political cost for you. And we saw that on the health care. I mean, Donald Trump had right. about as much influence on health care as I had on the National League pennant race. Well, which uh, leads us to another. I mean, David, you said they've had they've had a struggle getting anything passed, getting legislation passed. This was a flame out uh, for them. Yeah, this was a bigger thing than Donald Trump, though. Uh, it wasn't only it one was. bill that that right. lost. It was four bills that lost, and it wasn't one, only a six months effort. It was a seven year effort. I agree. And you could say you could go back to Newt Gingrich. Think of all the ways the Republicans have tried to trim entitlements like Medicaid or cut government. Name a signal victory. There's not a victory. They haven't been able to trim one agency, cut back one entitlement. They failed every single time. And that suggests the failure is an intellectual failure. It's not a failure of whether Mitch McConnell had the right strategy or not, though that was lamentable. Uh, it's a failure of trying to take things away from people. People are under assault from technology. They're under assault from a breakdown in social fabric, breakdown in families. They've got wage stagnations. They just don't want a party to come in and say, we're going to take more away from you. And so Republicans have to wrap their minds around the fact that the American people have basically decided that health care is a right. And they figure, we should get health care. And our fellow countries should get health care. It doesn't mean you have to do it the way the Democrats want to do it, with single payer or whatever. You can do it with market mechanisms, but you basically got to wrap your mind around universal coverage. How do you see what happened here, Mark, and where do you see it going on health care? Uh, Judy, the, the yapping dog, which was the Republican Party, after chasing the bus for seven years, caught it and had no idea what to do with the bus. I mean, it, it, all, all you need is that final vote that Lisa described so well, and that is the, uh, the, the final argument after seven years, after winning three national elections, where this is your organizing issue, we're going to repeal Obamacare, came down to a single promise and pledge to your fellow Republicans from the leadership, and that is what you were voting for, we promise, will not become law. I mean, if you can imagine anything, I mean, that, 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 just, that just said it all. I mean, it was a terrible performance. It was, they, they, the House voted on something without even a congressional budget scoring of it. The Senate voted on something. They didn't even have a bill when they brought it to the floor. I mean, there was no legislation. So, I mean, it, it, was, a, it was horrendous. It was, it was a disappointing. There, there, were, there were no ideas. There was no will. There was no imagination. And there was certainly no courage. I, I don't blame Donald Trump, but what was Donald Trump saying? Donald Trump was saying he's disappointed in the right. attorney general because he wasn't loyal to him. That was his contribution to the debate on health care as it came to a vote in the Senate. What do you think the prospects are, David, that they're going to be able to work with the Democrats, or is that just something people are saying that's never really going to happen? Uh, I think that there's, there's a potential there. You could, if, if the Republicans get, get to the point where we're going to expand coverage, let's talk about how to do it. Uh, I think you could do some pretty market-friendly reforms. President Bush did it with a prescription drug uh, bill a number of years ago, uh, but they're a long way from that right now. John McCain does deserve, a, in my judgment, a shout out. Uh, John McCain's vote flying back kept it alive, kept the debate alive, by, uh, allowing the motion to proceed. And John McCain uh, uh, applied the, uh, it gave the speech once he had the whole audience there of senators, and he told them what they had done wrong with, that they all stood accused, that they, they cheap partisanship had replaced any kind of sense of legislating. And uh, I, I, really, uh, I really do think that his, his vote, uh, it, we, we found out that the tes testosterone level among Republicans was limited essentially to two members uh, whose names were Lisa and Susan. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that, that was, and, and John McCain uh, joined that trio and, uh, and, and showed, I, I thought, rare pol distinct political courage um, and, uh, and, and for the right reasons. And some of the Republican men in the House of Representatives went after those women, uh, as a matter uh, yes, of fact, in the Blake Senate. Yes, Aaron told uh, uh, a courageous. Uh, it, but it does Aaron raise. Aaron Burr would be. Aaron Burr. <laughs> it does raise a question. I mean, people are watching this, David, and they have to be asking: Is anything going to get done? 
in in our nation's capital. Uh, you know, with the White House in some measure of chaos. Uh, yes, there have been some changes, but where's the, you know, what, what are people to look forward to now? Yeah, I don't think much is going to get done. I don't think they're going to do tax reform. The tax reform is super hard. It's mm -hmm. potentially as hard or harder than health care reform. Uh, and it seems very unlikely that that's going to get done. And what hasn't happened is you don't have people waking up thinking, how creatively can I come up with some piece of legislation that'll do somebody some good? Mm -hmm. That's when I started covering Congress in the 1980s, there were a bunch of entrepreneurs. Like Jack Kemp was there, Bill Bradley would have something on the gold standard, there was a guy named Jim Corder who always had defense reform ideas. And so you had startups in the back rows of the House. And then they finagled their way through the committees. Now you have very few entrepreneurs, you have very few people thinking creatively. I rarely get emails, I rarely get calls. There's a guy named Ro Khanna from San Francisco or from Palo Alto who's a Democrat who thinks this way. But there's not as much entrepreneurship and the, the main cause is because the leadership of the body has taken control and destroyed creativity throughout the ranks. And that's a fault of both Nancy Pelosi probably and Mitch McConnell who've just centralized everything. And so the committee system's broken and the, the startups are broken. And, and the White House is having its own share of problems. We've alluded to this, but Mark, I mean, a lot of attention this week about this profanity-laced uh, uh, phone conversation that uh, the new White House communications director, he hasn't actually taken the job yet, but he's been named by the president, had with a New Yorker reporter. Um, it seems that everywhere we look, there's conflict, there's screaming, there's discord. Uh, you know, what? where do we see hope and something positive. Well, obviously not in Shields and Brooks. <laughs> those, uh, I'm giving you a chance. Yeah, Mass for the shut-ins is on on Sunday at 9 o'clock if people want to hear a good sermon. No, I, I'd say this, Judy, that uh, Anthony Scaramucci is Donald Trump. I mean, every White House staff, to some degree, inevitably becomes a mirror reflection of the, can the candidate, the president. He is it. Um, and, and what he did, uh, Donald Trump approved of, uh, the abusing of the chief of staff, the abusing, uh, the denigration of other leading members of the White House staff. I mean, and, and do did Donald Trump disapprove? I mean, if you had a 14-year-old daughter uh, volunteering on the Hill, or a 14-year-old boy, I don't care, and this is the kind of language you get? I mean, this, this is, this is blood-curdling. It, it's offensive and it, it's obscene. You get to defend him, David. Yeah, it is offensive. Well, I'm from New York City, Mark's from Boston, and on, on behalf of 8 million New Yorkers, I want to apologize for our language, uh, Scaramucci <laughs> and Trump. I just want to say that even though they're from Queens and Long Island, I'm pretty sure they're Yankee fans, they're not Mets fans. <laughs> they uh, we don't talk that way. They have no, to be. Mets fans. Uh, no, it, it's, right. yeah, I agree, blood-curdling would be the word. I gave you both a chance to say something positive. Uh, you didn't do it. We're gonna, we'll You're let you come back and Judy. try again next week. <laughs> David Brooks, Mark Shields, thank you both. <laughs>